All right, y'all. So I've gotten a bunch of feedback from y'all. I appreciate all the comments um, in response to the fake FBI agent police impersonator videos obtained from the Carson City Sheriff's Office uh, body camera footage. This was originally a traffic stop that was initiated as a result of uh, the improper display of uh, the rear license plate as a result of a tinted license plate cover. Uh, during the traffic stop, the um, deputy noticed that there was a lighting system on the dash of the vehicle um, and asked what color that lighting system was because the lighting system on the dash was not activated and you can't tell whether those are red and or blue lights on the lighting system unless uh, that lighting system is displayed. Okay, as per NRS, uh, when one is operating a vehicle with such a lighting system displayed, then that's a violation of the NRS. But actually having that lighting system in your car is not illegal. It's not illegal to possess red and blue lights or whatever lighting system you want so long as you're not operating the vehicle with those lights on display. So um, this is a matter of entrapment because if you watch the complete um, body camera footage of the incident, you'll notice that uh, Deputy um, Francisco Torres asks the driver or subject uh, to turn those lights on to verify the coloring of the lighting system. And, and the driver complies, right? Being a, a good uh, Samaritan, um, the driver is cooperative. That's what you want, as, as, right? As a police officer, right? In, initiating a stop and he was talking about officer safety. Why didn't you pull over right away and all this stuff? Well, and again, the driver pulled over when it was safe to do so. Okay. And did so reasonably. Um, so the point being is, is that entrapment is when law enforcement officers uh, induce or entice one to uh, commit a crime they otherwise would not have committed. So in this particular instance... Had the officer not asked the driver to activate the lighting system, the lighting system would not have been on display. And then because the lighting system was displayed after being activated, there's no argument there. All right. Um, uh, the uh, arresting officer um, used that uh, as incidental to conducting a search of the driver during which he discovered a uh, FBI special agent badge and then drew the inference that the driver was impersonating a peace officer when um, repeatedly the subject stated that, no, I'm not a cop, when asked so directly. Are you a cop? No. Okay. So you, you, see, you see what I'm getting at? I'm a contractor. That's what subject told the uh, arresting officer. All right, security contractor. Never uh, during this incident did the driver identify himself as LEO. All right, N not, at, uh, not at all. And you go over the video footage. The subject did not identify himself as being a peace officer, a police officer, or federal agent. Federal agents aren't even considered police officers in the state of Nevada, actually. So... Uh, that's interesting. Also, uh, they're not category one peace officers, but the point being is, is that right then and there, when the officer asked the driver to turn the lighting system on, entrapment. Okay? Because you wouldn't arrest him if he didn't turn the lighting system on, would you? No, because you don't know that the lighting system is red or blue. So, Anything obtained after that as evidence in support of personation, right, is the fruit of the poisonous tree. It's inadmissible. It's a violation of the Fourth Amendment, search and seizure. All right. So given that, um, I've went over some of y'all comments that uh, are in support of um, the sheriff's department in this municipality, which isn't even a county, sheriffs are usually supposed to be the designated authority of the county, not municipality. 
It's really strange. It's bizarre. But uh, point being is, is that policing for profit kind of takes advantage of um, an officer's discretionary powers to draw reasonable inferences in response to the totality of the circumstances. Okay, that's what officers have. Uh, and so when you're dealing with um, what's kind of a gray area, right, in law enforcement, that's what policing for profit does. You don't have to make the arrest. Why, why do you care? What, what does it matter to you? You see what I'm saying? So um, in this particular instance, the sheriff's uh, deputy knows who I am. He may not remember that we trained together, but he knows who I am. All right? And not as a subject or suspect. All right? So uh, the point being is, is that to go that far, to um, escalate a situation <laughs> when that should have been a simple uh, a traffic violation... All right. Uh, and did not require the kind of law enforcement assistance uh, which responded to the incident um, all throughout the um, video footage. As y'all who have watched the video may know that you had about four, five police officers. One of them was a state investigator, the head sheriff. Kenny Furlong himself, because what happens is, is that oftentimes um, when you have certain departments that are micromanaged, and we hear that term often micromanaging, right, and, and both the government and uh, private sector, um, but when you have instances of micromanaging of departments, <sighs> officers are oftentimes not allowed to perform their job as... Um, they're supposed to. They have, they, have the, they have these discretionary powers for a reason, right? You're supposed to be able to trust your law enforcement, okay? That's why they have the discretionary powers to draw reasonable inferences in response to the totality of the circumstances. However, with departments such as CCSO, uh, if they're not dealing with... Um, uh, that code of law which they're used to uh, responding to routinely they have to call their superiors because they don't know how to read the NRS so apparently this is, this is what it is required to determine um, the interpretation of displaying this is what the argument is here is about with these people they don't know how to read the NRS. Displaying. What are displaying red and blues? Well, they weren't displaying until you, you asked for me to turn them on. Right? The red and blues were not displaying. Then that's, what, that's the re cause and reason to ask the individual to turn on the um, lighting systems. And then only then did the officer make the decision to make a search incidental to that. Otherwise, you don't know that those are red and blue lights. See, but policing for profit takes advantage of that. All right, they they want you to go to court, pay the fees, and then they have the d district attorney there. Oh, like we can make any argument we want, and it's like, yo, but there's a law in the United States of America, not in Nevada. See, and this is how they act. That's what's horrible because I've worked for the state of Nevada. 